In this video, we'll be tearing apart this curved monitor in preparation for a new curved Kate arcade. Stick around. Welcome back. In the previous Curve Cade video project, you may have noticed that that thing is custom from the ground up. Just about every component and aspect of that design um, was designed from scratch, with the exception of a few things. Obviously, the low-level components like the monitor, the controls, the buttons, and things like that, those were pretty stock. And to get there, I went through a lot of research to maybe I look for those panels, those individual components, so that I could purchase them and use them at a low level and be able to customize the environment. But that doesn't always work out. In this case, I've used the uh, Samsung monitors uh, and their core components as part of that design. So that makes that the Curve K design critically, I guess, associated to that Samsung product. So if they change their design, then I'm kind of screwed and I need to adjust it. But that said, a lot of people have asked, you know, how do I fit that monitor in such a small enclosure and those sort of questions. So to address that, today we're going to be looking at the 27-inch uh, Samsung curved monitor. This is a 1000R, which is twice as curved as the previous curved cave monitor. So this will have a lot better form factor. And I'm going to show you how to tear this apart, how we get to those components, and how we use them in the design of the, the next generation curve cave, or whatever project you may be working on. So there's a few steps. We're going to start with unboxing this and tearing it apart, and it's easier than you think, so stick around. So the first thing we had to do is open up the monitor, obviously get out the base, got a couple screws, and then take out the main monitor. Now you can see this monitor, uh, if we use the entire enclosure, it's thicker than the actual curve cave. So there's no way that that's going to happen. So first thing I need to do is, um, you notice there's no screws on this monitor at all. And it's not symmetrical, so I, using a small flathead screwdriver, slowly pull apart this bezel and kind of work the seams. Um, finding the snap fit clips and generally uh, you'll find what the parts that want to give the seams that want to give and then uh, just finesse them until they come apart uh, I was working the bottom for a while and there are some um, sensitive areas on the monitors on how the LCDs connect to the circuit board so you need to be careful if you are sticking a, a metal pry bar into these seams um, but basically searching for the clips searching for what's holding it together um, I think there was about six clips on each side of this monitor bezel and just kind of worked my way around when it felt like I was making progress continue to look for that pattern of where the clips would be flip it over and then work on the top uh, doing the same thing finding the clips just applying pressure subtly until it just snaps off there you are um, these monitors are have little to no hardware at all everything snap fit you see those nice ported speakers there um, those come off and they're Components that are just plugged into the circuit board you can easily use those. Those may have better sound than the the speakers I had planned on using. And then uh, everything's just plug and play, just disconnect it. That rear connection bezel has a little interface that comes right off. We can throw that away. Monitor bezel's all good. And the cool thing about these Samsungs, they have these little D-pads for configuring the display, which is really nice and easy to integrate. Again, the speakers are ported. Nice little three inch rectangular with a port. So they should have good bass, good sound, as you would assume from a, a TV has to be pretty loud. That D-pad just unplugs and then we're good to go. Um, you see that's a minimal component. Obviously we could work to take off that remaining black bezel. And these are the driver boards that you need to be careful about. Then with the monitor good to go, next we need to model it in Fusion 360. Before we get too far, electronic projects always start with good circuit designs. And for that, I rely on Altium Designer. From simple to complex, if you haven't taken a chance to download a free copy and see what you're missing, I've put links in the description. And with Altium Designer, creating these complex projects is a piece of cake. Through your development, you'll be empowered to do your best work as you grow into its more advanced capabilities. The link in the description below will allow you a free trial version of the software so that you can check it out and see what Enterprise Class ECAD feels like. Now back to the overview. Okay, the first thing I had to do is take a picture of the monitor from top view. So on the floor, I took a snapshot, got my foot in there too. And this is really to allow me to draw a sketch around the standoffs and the thickness of the monitor. So I would know what sort of clearance I need to slide this in and just what I was working with with the dimensions of the monitor. And I also needed to confirm that 
while this was a thousand R monitor, in actuality, the arc on the front of the bezel was really about 1050 R. And now it could be flexed, um, but I didn't want to put strain on it, so I just did it what the actual arc was, so 1050 R. And then I used that as a canvas to create the extrusion, well, the sketch and the extrusion. And from that extrusion, that's really my starting point for representing the monitor in my project. So I round up um, on millimeters to ensure that I have some, at least one or two millimeters of tolerance. And, and then we um, throw some graphics on there to give it some style so that I know where the placement is. As well as on the back side, you see we've got a representation of the circuit board. Now on these Samsung monitors, the circuit board just snaps on. It's a snap fit. There's literally no hardware to this entire monitor. So once the monitor is complete, the next step was to model the speakers, those ported speakers. So using a micrometer and calipers and creating a sketch, I took the critical dimensions for the tabs and these ears on either side. And then I created a path for some of the sweeps I'd need to do, as well as the magnets, the coil, and the speaker area. And then I used the same sketch to just do a bunch of extrusions, uh, starting with the magnets, and then the ears or the tabs, which is a three millimeter thickness, and then the main body of the speaker enclosure. Created the coil on the speaker, and then ran a sweep for the ported tube there. And then just for aesthetics, I mean, the accuracy really only comes down to the mount points, but for the sake of consistency and orientation, I obviously wanted to get that port just right so that I can align it with my product design and the interface on the side. And then model the speaker, obviously where it needs to go, where the cone is, did a couple lofts and then texturized it just to make it look cool. This is all good practice for when you're designing the products. Uh, these, designing these subcomponents is a lot of practice. Reverse en engineering other um, components that went into it, like the monitor and the speaker here, was a lot of fun. Um, and it also gives you insight in how other people design those things. And that's basically the speaker, ported speaker subassembly that is for that Samsung 27 inch monitor. I'll be using that in the project next. Okay, over in the Curvecade project, we bring in those components along with other control components. I begin to set up the orientation with those. Now I have uh, these placeholders. I can design the arc of the side of the curve cade, as you may have noticed in the previous project. But that's how these components got created. Um, we just created them as subcomponents, link them into this design, and then I start to design around those components. So getting the minimal size to the components allows me to plan and coordinate my strategy for how I'm going to orient and fix them into my design. So it took a little bit of time getting these, this control panel layout. You see in the Curve K2, we've got the trackball there in the middle, the blue buttons for the trackball, and then the red joystick with the red buttons for the joystick, allowing you to play different games, Centipede, Golden T, even Tempest. Now throwing on some graphics and mirroring the components, you'll see that we uh, made some quick progress and know exactly where our components are gonna reside within the design as well as adding in those speakers, um, lets me know what type of clearance I'll be working with and how I'll need to design to fix them into the part of my, um, my fixture assembly. Now we know the size and dimensions and how we can mount those speakers with great deal of accuracy. So we can plan for as much as we can in advance before we actually start building, cutting, or buying materials. So there we go, the new uh, Curvecade 2.0 interface. So that's about all there is to it. This is a quick short video to kind of show you how we can get to the core components uh, of these retail products and then use them in our applications. Of course you're voiding all warranties but you get some great components out of there and in the end they're designing their components and products to be modular to have reusable components that are easier to swap out as well. So that makes it easy for us to disassemble, use those in our solutions, our little projects that we invent and uh, in this case, you saw that we got a couple really great little miniature ported speakers. These are going to work great for the arcade. Um, and modeling them in Fusion 360 makes it easy to integrate and interface with those components. And as well as a streamlined, miniature, you know, minimal curved monitor solution that is going to allow us to design discreetly for this product. So that's going to do it for this video. 
If you like this particular video, give it a thumbs up. If it helped you out, subscribe to the channel, click that notification. It'll keep you updated on future updates. And that's about it. <laughs> In the meantime, be safe, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too. See ya.